Hey there, fantastic dog treat bakers. Kara Brothers here, your go-to guide for turning your passion for pup treats into a thriving business. Welcome back to Positive Profit. Today, we're tackling a crucial topic for all of you who love to showcase your treats at outdoor events. The weather will be warming up soon, or maybe it's already warm where you're at now. Before you know it, vending season will be in full swing, and I want you to be prepared. It's time for the Ultimate Dog Treat Baker's Outdoor Event Success Checklist. Let's jump right in. First things first, your treat display. A visually appealing setup is key to attracting customers. Find out how big your booth space will be in advance, and this will help you plan properly. A typical size is 10 foot by 10 foot, and this space generally allows for two six foot tables, or my preference, one six foot and one eight foot table. Bring tablecloths to fit, and no one likes to see a naked table, so make sure you have a tablecloth. My very favorite ones to use are the ones with spandex in them. They're stretchy, so I stretch them over the top and then they go down the sides and they kind of tuck under the feet. That way, the underneath of the table is completely hidden. You could put your little wagon there if you brought it, extra boxes, extra anything, and it's all stowed away neatly out of the customer's view. Also bring along some creative treat stand displays and trays to show off your treats and transform your booth into an irresistible treat haven. I like to get chargers, you know, like a dinner plate would sit on some big chargers or even rectangular trays, just something different on the table to get customers interest. Wind is something that usually finds me at my booth at outdoor events. I hate it. I hate the wind because it makes my treat bags topple. But I did buy some wooden crates at Big Lots. I know that craft stores also carry them too. I can store treats inside and it protects them from the wind. I can also store smaller boxes right on top of it, kind of like a treat tower. When I build up the volume like this, it gives the eye a place to go and it makes your table look way more interesting because a flat table with Everything at one level isn't very interesting. When I very first started my business, I knew that I wanted to carry soft treats. And I also knew that I wanted to display them in a pastry case. Where else? It's where you'd expect to find human treats. And I love fooling the eye. I love fooling customers. So being that they're in a pastry case, I also bring this along. It's a regular part of my setup. In fact, it's the star attraction and the focal point of my setup. I also bring along a pair of tongs and takeout boxes to put the treats in when a customer purchases them. Since the treats aren't pre-packaged, I also keep a binder on the table that lists the ingredients and guaranteed analysis of all the treats in the pastry case so customers can easily read this information before making a purchase. When a customer buys a treat from my pastry case, I also let them know to consume the treat immediately or store it in the refrigerator for about a week, which is also what I tell them to do with any leftovers as well. I'll place the treat in a box, depending on what it is. I like to use these boxes. They have a hinge lid, they're biodegradable, and they're like what you would put a hamburger or a little salad in. And these are perfect for donuts, bacon maple bars, and my individual slices of cake and a lot of things. I use these up a lot and I'll put a little logo sticker right there on the top. For maybe individual cookies or some other things, I have glassine bags. I found out that while using a rubber stamp is perfect for a glassine bag, and you guys, using rubber stamps saves a lot of money. Stickers are expensive. I print my own, but still the cost adds up and I can't put a sticker really, uh, I mean, I can't put a rubber stamp on this surface because it's kind of miniaturized corrugation. It's like bumpy, textured, okay, miniaturized corrugation. Who thinks of these things? Anyway, so I put a tiny sticker here, but really I try to use a rubber stamp whenever I can, even on the shopping bags for my treats too. And I try to have these prepared ahead of time 
with a cute little bow with dog print pattern and then my rubber stamp. I also have different sizes of bags depending on what they're buying. So I love this kind of packaging. And even though I'll try to prepare everything in advance to bring with me, let's face it, sometimes being at events, you have slow periods. So I'll bring my rubber stamp and my bags and my ribbon, and I'll just go ahead and, and prepare everything, you know, while I'm waiting for a sale. I also found that these are really cute stickers. They're super cheap. I got them on Amazon. They're like one inch by one inch paws. If somebody were to order something and I'll put it in a bag and flip the top over and peel off a sticker and put it right there to hold it closed. Also, my colors are black and white, so <laughs> all of this really works out too. Let's make your treats pop. Another way I like to make my whole display stand out and pop, the cute little dog signs. Who can forget live, love, bark? It's a key thing. It lets people know I'm a dog person, which is great because they're dog people too. That's who's coming in the tent. It just makes them feel at home. This is a patch of fake grass. I think it came in an eight foot roll, something like that. And I cut it into the sections I wanted. If I put this down on my tablecloth and I put a charger on top of it and then display my treats, it's so, so cute. I love adding this because obviously dogs and grass go together. Or I'll have a longer piece that I'll put on the ground. And if it's a dog-friendly event, I'll have a bowl of water on here, like a little doggy hydration station. It looks so cute. And if you do cutesy little things too, here are some dog toys shaped like actual treats. Now I sell doggy donuts, so isn't that perfect? Here's also another one. It's a dog bone sandwich cookie. I used to make these cookies, you guys, dog bones with filling inside, peanut butter actually, and then dipped in sprinkles. So cute. These are cute little things you can add. I got these at the dollar store and this was a roll of fake grass or turf that was on Amazon and I just cut it for the pieces I need. Anyway, really cute eye popping things to make your booth stand out. So let's talk about packaging and pricing. Try and have a variety of treat bags and boxes at your booth and make them very eye catching. Here's what I mean by a variety of treat bags. I've got small bags of treats, and they also have bigger ones as well. So I've got different sizes of my bag treats. Also, what I don't have here are my gluten-free treats, which is a brown craft stand-up resealable bag. Same thing, it's just brown. And I put my gluten-free bag treats in the brown color so people can distinguish them, okay? I've got strawberry all-natural gluten-free Pop-Tarts, and they have like a little cute bento box. So adorable. This has a clear plastic lid. My, oh, these smell amazing. They smell so, so good. The clear plastic really lets customers see inside and see all of those gorgeous, gorgeous sprinkles. You can see I've used my dough docker to make the holes so they don't puff up. I also have my signature Chico Dog Barkery cookie with my rainbow sprinkles. It's individually packaged. I've got pumpkin biscotti done up with a stretchy elastic gold bow, and it's in a bag. So I've got a couple of different ways that I package treats, a couple of different treats I offer, but they're all really different from each other, all really unique. And customers want to see that. If you can have some variety, it'll only go to serve you and get you more sales. Now that we've talked about making your treat packaging very eye-catching, let's talk about pricing. Not what you should price your treats for, but having a visible price list and enticing signage. Those will help customers make real quick decisions without hesitation. They won't be wondering, how much is this, right? So here's what I mean. Here's a Christmas menu that I did, and it's pretty straightforward. I would have it two-sided, but apparently I don't right now. But having this price list lets people know exactly what I offer and how much it is. Even though I offer this price list, I also love to use these black kind of table tent style price cards. I got them on Amazon. I think they were 20 of them, maybe 10 of them, something like that. And I just use a white pen to write on them. They erase so I can change my mind. And I put them right, right by all of my treats. And then I also have that comprehensive price list. So making sure that you've got your price list current and visible will really help customers out. Also, putting your price list in an acrylic sign holder, I forgot to mention that, is really key because as I said, it gets very windy where I live and 
This, if it was just a piece of paper, it would fly all around. These do have bases, by the way. I'm not showing the base because somehow the base got separated. I know it's all about the base, but apparently it's not right now. Putting your price list in clear acrylic sign holders protects them. It weights them down and they're really reusable and they still look nice. Other things that I put in acrylic sign holders are any seasonal messaging that I want to put out. Maybe I've got a line of Halloween cookies or fall cookies or Christmas cookies. This is a way I can go ahead and share that information with my customers and have it really easy for them to read, easy for them to see. Now let's talk about payment and payment options because payment convenience is a game changer for more sales. Ensure, number one, that you do have a cash box with you at your events for those who prefer the green and the coin. A lot of people still use cash, so make sure you've got a change box. I started out with a small change box when I first got going. It was pretty much the bare minimum, but it didn't take long before I started getting busier and realized I need something that is easier to organize and more efficient because there were times where we had two people making sales at the same time. You know, our hands are crossing each other as we're going into the cash box and and we had lines and it got really exciting. But having a bigger cash box with space for all the bills was something I absolutely needed. So make sure to bring a cash box with you. I also use Square for my payment processing for credit cards and tap to pay. And I accept Apple Pay. I also accept Venmo and Cash App. Putting the types of payment that you accept right on your table, easy for customers to see, will also help them make quick decisions about purchasing from you. Whether you choose to put your payment information that you'll accept in a clear acrylic sign holder, or even something smaller like a picture frame. I just spray painted this one gold because I thought it looked cool. But anyway, putting it in something like this, just something on your table so customers can see right at a glance what you accept. I didn't always have Venmo or Cash App or things like that, but too many times people would come in and say, do you accept Venmo? Do you accept Cash App? And I had to turn away sales because that's all they had. Now I accept any, everything and I don't have to turn away anyone. So let's talk about marketing and promotion. Let's get your name out there. Business cards with your contact info and your Instagram and Facebook handles and email are a must. Don't forget some promotional materials, perhaps a flyer or a brochure showcasing your unique treats, or even a flyer showing the locations and the dates that you'll be next. Those can all help customers. Make sure that you keep consistent branding on all of that information. But just like you're going to put the dates and locations of where you're going to be on Instagram in your stories or whatnot, so people know where to find you, not everyone is a follower. So Having that information on your table is great for people who want to buy more and want to know where you're going to be next. So make sure you've got that. I also like to have, as I said, information on the table. If I've got um, a sale going on, that's great information I want to share with my customers. Or if there's a mix and match bundle, great information. Also, don't be afraid to wear your business shirt. Wear it at every single event with your name and logo. The whole purpose of this is to make customers remember you. We're going to spend just a little time on hygiene and safety. Hygiene, of course, is non-negotiable. Hand sanitizer, gloves, and a commitment to cleanliness will give your customers the confidence to indulge in your treats worry-free. I should say for their dogs to indulge in your treats and your customers to be worry-free. Also, it doesn't hurt to carry along uh, a basic first aid kit. We've had, you know, accidents happen. Someone needed a band-aid. So make sure you've got a basic first aid kit as well because you just never know. So that's just another layer that customers can see that you take this seriously. Their pet's health is important to you. One of my favorite things to talk about is comfort and setup. So let's talk about comfort, right? Because if you're not comfortable, it's going to be a bad negative experience and that's never fun. Because these events, they're not just like 45 minutes long, right? They're hours and hours and sometimes hours long. So you want to make sure you and your crew are as comfortable as you can possibly be. 
So bring folding chairs. You're going to want to sit down and take a break and wear comfortable clothing. I always carry water and snacks with me. Too many times I've been at events and there was no place to refill my water bottle or there was no one selling food, which is odd. Usually they do. But now I just make sure I can rely on myself where I have got water and snacks with me at all times. And if they sell food, bonus, I don't have to eat my trail mix. You know what I'm saying? Something I also like to bring for comfort and especially for setup is a wagon. One of those collapsible wagons. The ideal is that you're able to drive your car right up to where you're going to set up. But that doesn't always happen. Most of the time, you have to drive, you know, you're you're parked over here, but your setup is over here. Or you might be in a parking garage or around the corner. And having a small little wagon really saves so much time and it saves your back, honestly. The biggest thing for comfort and setup, I can tell you, is bring another human being to help you set up and tear down or even just man the booth so you can sneak out for a potty break, right? Because that's reality too. A comfortable setup means a happy and engaged baker. So make sure you're comfy the whole way through. We'll talk now about event permits and documentation. Don't forget the paperwork. Check to see if you need any permits or certifications for the event. For me, I live in the state of California and we are required to have a seller's permit and we're required to have the address of where we will be selling shown at each event. So this always changes no matter where we're going to be. Some I make permanent if I know I'm going to be there for, you know, half a year or every year. And some of these are just like a one day use kind of a thing, but always show this on my table because I'm required to. Some events require insurance. So make sure you have submitted your insurance certificate to them before it starts. And it never hurts to have the coordinator's name and phone number handy, just in case when you get there, you have a question or the night before you've got a question. There's times an event is coming up the next day, but it's currently raining cats and dogs. And I don't know what their policy is for rain. Do they refund? Does the show go on? Who knows? But just make sure you have a way to get a hold of these people to avoid last minute stress. So we'll touch briefly on packaging waste and weather preparedness. So let's be environmentally conscious to bring trash bags for packaging waste, because sometimes a customer will want to give their dog a treat, like maybe a single use cookie right then and there. And you're going to want something for them to throw their trash in because they'll ask. And you might have trash too, as well, you know, paper towels, food waste, whatever. So make sure you bring something to put all that in. If it's a dog-friendly event, I will also carry doggy waste bags. That's kind of a must-have just in case of the good old oopsie poopsie. Also be prepared for the weather with a tent or a cover in case of rain. I mean, that goes without saying. If you're going to be doing any outdoor event, no matter what the season, I would bring a tent. You're going to look more professional. You're going to look more in line with everyone there. They might even require one. Have I ever seen a vendor without a tent? Yes. And it's far and few between. And maybe those are first timers who perhaps didn't know. Get yourself a tent. This is something, in my opinion, to get a good one. Spend some extra money and get yourself a good tent. They go through a lot of wear wear and tear being opened up, put back, opened up, put back. And if you're on the event train, you'll be doing this a lot. So spend some money on a a good quality tent and you can get them anywhere. I got mine on Amazon. They sell them at Walmart, Target, big box stores, camping stores. I chose to buy two sides for my tent. They didn't come with them, but they worked. They're, They're zip on sides. And these sides will work if it's sunny to keep the sun off of me. And the treats, you guys, condensation is a whole other episode. Do you guys feel me? And it also helps keep rain away. We've ended an event for several months that was rain or shine. It was a farmer's market where it didn't matter if it was raining or not. You had to sell your treats. And sure enough, you know, we vended in the rain. So those sides were crucial to block rain coming in. And of course, we had to rearrange our setup. We did everything differently, but we managed and we made sales. And thank God for those sides. If you don't have sides for your tent, don't worry. 
you can get sheets and clips. Just clip, clip the sheet up to the top of your tent. And you might want to because the sun moves and changes as the day progresses. So make sure you've got something to block off wind, rain, sun, things like that. You'll appreciate the comfort, trust me. And then don't forget the weights. Weights are are really important. As I said, for me, wind always finds me. Some venues require weights and they require a certain poundage of weights. So find out if yours requires weights and how much weight it requires. I do 10 pounds of weights on all four legs. I have seen a vendor's tent do a full-on Wizard of Oz in the air and crash down on another vendor's setup. You guys, we all felt for her. We're like, oh my God, you know, right? And we're as we're scrambling to help her, to help them, really, because now two vendors are, I mean, it's just mayhem. We're also looking back at our tent, like, we put ways on our tent, (laughs) you know? Really important, you guys. Don't underestimate. Oh, wind gusts can come out of nowhere. It's just a terrible calamity for all parties involved. Let's talk about customer interaction. Engage with your customers. Greet them when they come into the booth. This is your chance to make them feel welcome. Tell them about your treats. Ask, hey, what kind of dog do you have? Big, little, senior, missing teeth, puppy, you know, get a chance to figure out what kind of dog they have. You know your treats better than anybody. And you'll be able to recommend things that you sell for their dog. And everyone loves talking about their dog. And you know you got a real dog mom or real dog, like dedicated dad right in your tent when you ask him about their dog. And the first thing they do is, wait a minute, let me show you a picture. You know, and it's their home screen. I just love that. Anyway, my go-to greeting now is welcome into our Barkery for Dogs because Barkery is part of our name. But this lets customers know right away that the treats are made for dogs and not humans. I cannot count the times I've had customers in the process of either paying for treats and exclaim, you know, how excited they were to eat them, all kinds of things. Even though we're a barkery for dogs, there's dog treat themed stuff all over the place. They still don't know. They still don't get that they are for dogs. The treats in my my pastry case, they never fail to trick folks. I just love it. Anyway, so that lets people know, hey, you're in a place where there are dog treats. Anyway, it's so much fun. Also have a book for email signups. If you want to collect emails for an email list, maybe you want to email out promotions, things like that. Know when the dog's birthday is, send them a free cookie. Who knows? If that's something that you want, don't forget to add that and have a pen and an order book for some quick orders. You might be surprised to learn that people will come in and place custom orders. This happened to me, especially for cakes. What happened with cakes is I kept getting requests from people who would come in. Oh, it's my pup's birthday. Do you make cakes? No, not yet. We're still finding our footing, but soon someone else would come in. No, not yet. You know, and I begin to feel like the pressure of I should start offering cakes, but I don't know why I make cake for humans, right? I've made cakes lots of them. Something about dog cakes like intimidated me for some reason. So I finally got up the nerve to say, all right, today's the day. If anyone comes in asking for a custom cake, I'm going to take their order. And sure enough, somebody did. It was their pup's birthday. And I remember real clearly their colors were green and they wanted a forest mountain scene. So uh, of course I said, okay, I'll do it. I already had bought the cake pans like a month ago. (laughs) Like I was just slowly inching toward the decision to offer cakes. So I got busy. I baked my cakes. They came out great. And I did green like they asked. And I put dog bones all around the side of the cake. For trees, I decided to take a a sprig of rosemary and turn it upside down. And it it looked like a, a pine tree. I stripped off the little needles down below to make it look like a tree trunk. And I put them on the backside. It turned out so cute. So, so cute. The owner was so delighted. It really worked out well. And I, once I put that picture of the cake I made on Instagram, oh, do you make cakes? Oh, my dog's having a birthday. 
Finally, I created a Google form to ask all my questions. How old is your pup going to be? What colors do you want? What theme do you want? And I begin to get orders that way. And then suddenly I'm like, oh, okay. Someone said, do you do party favors? I'm like, I will now. (laughs) So then I started offering party favors that people could buy to add on to their cake purchase if they're going to have a party for their dogs, because that is a thing. And it just took off from there. So now when anyone comes into my booth and says, oh, my dog's birthday is coming up, I just quickly whip out Instagram on my phone and I show them all the pictures of the dog birthday cakes I've done right on Instagram. I've had so many sales that way. It's it's amazing. So now I just direct them to the forum, but I also have an order book there because sometimes we get busy. So anyway, that's why I'm telling you, make sure you've got those things with you to interact with your customers and get some more sales. Last but not least, let's discuss transportation. Ensure that you have a suitable vehicle that will fit all of your treats and all of your equipment and get it to where you're going safely. Make sure you have the inside of your car cleaned out where you're going to have the treats so it can be hygienic and and safe and no dirt or debris is getting in your treats, obviously. I have got a Nissan Xterra. I got this vehicle because I could fold down the seats, put my tent in there, put my tables, put everything I need. I even have like a cargo luggage rack that's covered on the top. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands, but I've got a lot of space. And even though I've never, never needed the space on the top, the vehicle I have works perfectly. We have had situations where we've had to transfer all of that setup load into someone else's vehicle. And you'll begin to get a routine of how you pack your vehicle and you know what goes where. And then when you have to take a different vehicle, you're like, oh my God, it's Jenga. But uh, if you can pack your car ahead of time, I always pack mine the night before an event with everything. That way in the morning, I'm ready to go. Because usually I will head out in the morning and uh, last minute packing is never the way I want to go. I've done it a couple times and it's rushed and it's exasperating and, you know, I'm always worried if I forgot something. Last but not least, and I I forgot to mention this earlier, is lighting. Make sure you've got lighting for your tent. If either you're going to be at an early morning market and it's not as bright as you'd like, or the market will extend into the evening hours, maybe it gets darker earlier, you can buy battery operated strings of light, maybe in the town you live in, but certainly on Amazon. And those really help. I have my Neon Paw that plugs into the USB. So I have a battery pack somewhere and I just plug in my Neon Paw to my battery pack and it's this glowing pink thing. I put it on my tent and I'll look down the whole row of tents and we're the only one that stands out with this pink dog paw. There's no guessing what we do. So make sure you have light for your tent. I want to thank you so much for being with me, hanging out with me while we discuss the Dog Treat Bakers Outdoor Event Success Checklist from a stunning display to paperwork and everything in between. Remember, happy customers mean wagging tails and a thriving business. So until next time, this is Kara Brothers from Positive Profit, wishing you positive vibes and outdoor successful events. Happy baking and don't forget to treat yourself well.